If you were being hunted by a starving human-animal hybrid that was bent on revenge, what would you do? And now they're feasting on anyone unfortunate enough to stumble across their path. I'm here to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat Pooh and Piglet in Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. These five unsuspecting girlfriends are about to find out what's really lurking in the forest. Many years ago, a young boy named Christopher Robin befriended a group of strange creatures who were living deep within the Hundred Acre Wood. The human-animal hybrids introduced themselves to him as Owl, Rabbit, Eeyore, Piglet, and Winnie the Pooh, their leader. Christopher spent his childhood years wandering off to the forest to play with his new friends and bring them food, until eventually he matured and had to go off to college. He made the hard decision to leave them behind, and the creatures were forced to fend for themselves. A terrible winter struck, making it impossible for the creatures to find any food. After many nights on the brink of starvation, Pooh decided that they had to eat one of their own in order to survive, and poor Eeyore became their first victim. The creatures developed an intense hatred for all humans, Christopher Robin in particular, for leaving them behind. They descended into a state of feral madness and vowing to never speak again. Five years after leaving for college, Christopher returns to the Hundred Acre Wood for the first time with his fiancée, Mary, determined to prove to her that the creatures from his childhood really exist. They hike through the woods for hours, and Mary wants to turn back, but Christopher insists that they continue to just a bit further. He takes her hand, and the two of them walk down the trail together deeper into the forest, when suddenly they hear a strange bird call from somewhere in the forest. Christopher shouts that it's Pooh, and runs off towards the sound with Mary chasing after him. Christopher and Mary run through a tunnel of trees until they arrive at some sort of ramshackle fort. Christopher says that this is the right place, but it's changed a lot and is hardly anything like how he remembers it. Christopher comes along several large honeypots filled with blood, and wonders out loud what could have happened to Pooh after all these years. Mary insists that they need to leave right away, but Christopher tells her that she's not in any danger, and that he needs to find out what happened here and Mary reluctantly agrees to stay. They explore deeper into the camp and pass a makeshift tombstone that reads Eeyore R.I.P. written in blood, walking past tons of discarded honey jars until they stumble upon an ominous looking house. They walk inside and see that the place is dark and severely run down, and Mary finds a picture of him on the kitchen table with his face crossed out. He wonders why they would behave this way, and they realize that it's time to leave, but suddenly they hear someone stomping up the stairs outside, and the two of them lay down in the darkness out of of sight as an unseen creature enters the house and stomps around the room. Christopher and Mary wait silently in the darkness while it goes about its sinister business before finally falling asleep in a bed right next to where Mary is hiding. Night falls, and Christopher and Mary take their moment to escape while the creature snores on the bed. They sneak quietly out of the front door and down the stairs, but before they can get far, they hear another strange bird call, and Mary says that they need to hide again. But suddenly, a deranged-looking piglet bursts out from the shadows and wraps a chain around her neck, strangling her. Christopher runs to help her, but Piglet smacks him with the chain and knocks him to the ground. He begs Piglet to stop, but the monster only pulls harder, squealing wildly as it breaks his fiancée's neck right before his eyes. That makes one victim down, with eleven more to go. Christopher runs away screaming, with Piglet following closely behind him, when suddenly, Pooh appears at the other end illuminated by the flashing lightning. Christopher begs Pooh to help him, but quickly realizes that Pooh isn't there for a friendly reunion, as he pleads for his life, grabbing him by his feet and dragging him off to their lair, where they show him what's left of Eeyore and cook and eat his fiance. Okay, that definitely wasn't the welcome home party that Christopher was expecting. Pooh and Piglet are holding a violent grudge against Christopher for supposedly abandoning them, but I'd say they only have themselves to blame for how things ended up. The creatures are adolescents when Christopher first meets them, meaning that they somehow survived for at least the first 10 years of their lives out there on their own. Their breakup happens when he decides to leave for university, which usually happens at 18 years old. So for the last eight years, did they really just freeload off of Christopher without picking up any survival skills of their own? And when he knew he was going away to college, why wouldn't Christopher have set them up with some way to get their own food? He could have left them with a big stash, set up a garden so they could grow their own supplies, or even have taught them to go out in public disguised 
with a trench coat hat like a Ninja Turtle. That way, they wouldn't have had to resort to cannibalism after the first bad winter. I understand that Christopher wants to prove to Mary that his friends are real, but when he got there and found the place looking like the house from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, he should have had the common sense to run for it while they still had the chance. The giant pots full of blood and makeshift graves for ER make it pretty obvious that something has gone horribly wrong. If Christopher is going to insist on sticking around to find out what happened, then the two of them should have at least looked for a weapon in case things got violent. Inside the house, Mary finds a picture of Christopher with his face crossed out, so clearly these creatures aren't his friends anymore. But before they can leave, they hear one of the creatures coming up the stairs outside. Avoiding confrontation with it altogether might be the safest option for now, so hiding was probably their best bet. He falls asleep and they're almost home free, but Mary gets spooked and decides to hide again when they definitely should have been running for their lives. Piglet jumps out of the shadows and attacks her, and Christopher springs into action, but immediately just accepts defeat after being shoved away twice. Now, if I were in Mary's position here, I would have thrown my body weight back into Piglet and tried to knock him to the ground. If this didn't work, I would have stopped trying to pull the chain off of my neck since that clearly wasn't working, and instead reached back and tried to rip Piglet's ears off or gouge at his eyes. A full 30 seconds goes by as Christopher sits there doing nothing while his fiance is strangled to death in front of him. That's plenty of time to find a nearby weapon, like a farming tool, some broken glass, or a big empty pot to bash over his head. Even a classic dropkick might have done the trick. On the other hand, if he didn't really care that she died or genuinely believed that trying to fight back was pointless, Christopher also had plenty of time to run, but instead of fighting back or running, he just sits there begging him to stop. When Pooh and Piglet corner Christopher in his tree tunnel, he once again just stands there as they slowly walk towards him and lets them drag him away without putting up a fight. And based on the fact that they didn't kill him just right away too, it seems like they have something even worse than death planned for Christopher. That means that it's time to fight back any way he can, even if he thinks he can't win, since it'd definitely be better to go down fighting than have to endure whatever sick torture that they have in mind. Whoever comes across these freaks next is going to have to put up a better fight if they want to survive. Meanwhile, university student Maria sits on her therapist's couch discussing a stalking incident that left her traumatized. She tells her therapist that she feels like nothing has really changed, so the therapist recommends that she take a weekend trip to somewhere quiet to get away from the busyness of society and take her mind off everything that's happened. Maria agrees and schedules a trip with four of her friends to spend a weekend at a huge house in the Hundred Acre Wood. The girls drive through the woods together and get a call that their friend Tina is running two hours late. They pull into a rundown country gas station for fuel, but a sketchy looking guy tells Maria that the pumps are all broken. Her friends honk the horn calling her to go, and as she walks out, Maria accidentally bumps into a couple who were just walking in. She apologizes before heading back out to the car. Maria and her friends Jessica, Alice, Zoe, and Laura finally arrive at the huge house and have a look around, until Jessica asks them if they remember what they agreed. Reluctantly, each of the girls hands over their phones to Jessica and she turns them off and they all go upstairs to pick out their rooms. Meanwhile, Tina gets lost and tries to call the other girls for directions, but nobody picks up. She wanders into the woods, still trying to get one of her friends to answer the phone when suddenly she hears leaves crackling and turns to see Pooh standing behind her in the shadows. Pooh sprints towards her, and Tina runs for her life, the creature gaining on her with each step. She ducks into an abandoned garage, and for a moment it seems like she's safe, but Pooh enters through a side door and stomps around looking for her. Tina hides and gets up to peek when she thinks he's gone, but Pooh appears from the darkness behind her and grabs her by her hair. She begs for her life, but Pooh starts up a meat grinder, smashing her face into it several times before lifting her up and stuffing her whole body inside, turning her into a gooey red paste. That makes two victims down with 10 more to go. Okay, it looks like Tina isn't making it to Girls Weekend. Maria's therapist recommends that she gets away from society to help her forget about her stalker, but I'm not sure if going out to a creepy house in the middle of the woods is really the best way to relax. At least she invites five of her friends so she won't be out there all alone, but she has no idea that she's leading them right into a slaughter. Tina somehow gets lost even though her phone clearly has service since she's able to call her friends. 
When they don't answer, she inexplicably decides to leave her car behind and wander through the woods on foot. I really don't know what she was thinking here, but before she can get far, Pooh comes along and the chase begins. Tina decides to hide in the abandoned garage, and there were probably plenty of options for weapons around to defend herself in there. If she had only taken a second to look, I would have looked for a big wrench or some other tool and smashed Pooh in the legs with it as soon as he came around the corner. Even if Tina didn't think about that, she could beat him in a fair fight. Crippling his legs should at least give her a better chance to escape by just outrunning him. She also has her working phone, so while all of this was going on, she could have just tried to call the police. That way, she'd know help was coming if she could just survive long enough. Unfortunately, Tina's just as bad at surviving as she is at following directions, and Pooh shows her why you should never hide behind a meat grinder. Back at the house, Alice leads Zoe up to a bedroom and surprises her with a romantic arraignment of hearts that she had the host set up before they arrived. Meanwhile, Laura puts on some makeup while listening to music before heading downstairs and sneakily grabbing her phone out of the pile. The five girls sit around the fireplace drinking tea while Maria explains the story of her stalking incident to them for the first time. One night, around 3 a.m., she was sleeping alone in her room when she heard another noise and woke up to see the creep standing over her. The police arrested the man and found tons of pictures of her on his computer, meaning he must have been stalking her for a very long time. Maria tells them that the incident was extremely traumatizing, but she's feeling a lot better now that she's starting to get it off her mind. Back in their hideout, Pooh gorges himself on blood, while Piglet powers the electricity by pedaling a stationary bike. Mary's skeleton dangles from a meat hook with flies buzzing all around it, while Christopher stands in the middle of the room with his hands chained to the rafters above his head. Pooh walks up to Christopher and drools on him. He tells him that he had to leave and grow up, and the rest of society wouldn't have understood Pooh like he did. Christopher tells Pooh that he loves him and he's sorry, and for a moment, the creature walks away. Pooh stares at himself in the mirror and has flashbacks to memories of Christopher when he was a boy, telling him that they'd always be together. He sheds a single tear and then starts going berserk, tearing the place apart in a fit of rage while Christopher whimpers in the corner. Suddenly, the creature stops and quietly grabs Eeyore's tail from a nail in the wall. He turns Christopher around and proceeds to lash him repeatedly with the tail, using it as a whip and tearing his back to shreds. Pooh takes Mary's skeleton and sticks it on a table in front of Christopher before going upstairs and dumping her guts into a bucket which runs down a drain and showers Christopher in her blood. Night falls again and Pooh takes Mary's skeleton out into the woods when he hears music coming from somewhere in the distance. Meanwhile, Laura sits alone in the hot tub drinking wine and partying. She picks up her phone and starts taking some selfies, but while she's reviewing the pictures, she notices Pooh lurking in the background. Laura gets nervous and yells to see who's there, before turning off the music and climbing out of the water, and asks the unseen person if they were the one who was stalking Maria, but gets frustrated when she can't find anyone and decides to get back in the hot tub. She closes her eyes, but just as she lets her guard down, Pooh and Piglet begin approaching from the shadows. Laura lays there oblivious to the danger right behind her, and suddenly, Piglet holds a chloroform rag over her face, knocking her unconscious and lifting her out of the tub. Laura regains consciousness tied up in the driveway with Pooh revving a car engine just a few feet away. She screams and starts to struggle, but nobody can hear her, and Piglet slowly walks towards her while dragging a sledgehammer along the ground. Piglet stands on Laura's back, holding her in place and gives Pooh the signal, and he proceeds to slowly drive over her head, crushing her skull with the car. That makes three victims down with nine more to go. Okay, here I was thinking I'd never see Winnie the Pooh run somebody's head over with a BMW. How foolish of me. It seems like Christopher almost gets through to Pooh for a moment by reminding him of the good old days, but the memories end up throwing Pooh into a fit of rage and only makes the beating that much worse. Christopher seems to have been hung up there for a little while, and I would have tried to pull down with my body weight any time Pooh left the room, hopefully breaking whatever beam I was chained to and giving myself a chance to escape. I'd be sure to grab one of those menacing looking tools that are sitting just out of reach to defend myself, in case I ran into any of the creatures on my way out. Laura is obviously looking for attention, but probably not from a six foot tall human bear hybrid. She sits out in the dark hot tub alone and blasting her music, making herself the perfect target for any psychotic freaks of nature who happen to be nearby. As she looks through her selfies, she notices Pooh lingering in the background, and it baffles me that she didn't sprint inside right then and there. Instead, she gets out of the hot tub and looks around, even going so far as to taunt the inhuman monster that she knows without a doubt is lurking somewhere nearby and then just gets right back in when she doesn't see anyone. 
Well, brave or dumb, it doesn't matter, because she ends up knocked out and road killed either way. Needless to say, if I saw a photograph of Pooh stalking me from the darkness, I would have sprinted inside like an Olympic athlete and locked every door and window in the house before my friends even know what was going on. There's safety in numbers, and if Laura had reacted more quickly, she could have gotten inside the house and warned her friends. They could have grabbed some weapons and fortified their position, possibly making it out of this nightmare alive. Laura regains consciousness tied up and lying in the driveway, with Pooh getting ready to run her over. We've already seen how slow she is to react to danger, but now is the time to start taking action quickly. As soon as I saw Piglet walking over with that sledgehammer, I would have started rolling like a log to get away. Look, I know what you're thinking, and yes, I probably wouldn't have made it very far, but anything is better than just laying there and waiting for Pooh to squash you with the beamer. Even just getting the mouth covering off and delaying your death for a few seconds could give you enough time to scream for help and get your friends to come running. They might not end up being much help in a fight, but they definitely serve as a great distraction. And anything that interrupts Pooh and Piglet's plans would be worth trying. Unfortunately, Laura continues the trend of helpless victims and just flounders around while Pooh slowly turns her into a speed bump. And we'll have to see if any of the other girls even land a hit on him before they all become his next snack. Maria and Jessica are sitting by the pond when they hear Laura scream in the distance and run to investigate. They get to the driveway and notice the strange car, and Maria immediately gets suspicious that something is wrong. She has no idea just how bad things really are, though, until they go to the other side of the car and discover Laura's bloody body under a front tire. The girls run inside screaming and find Alice and Zoe standing in front of a window where the words, Get Out, have been crudely written in blood. They tell the other girls that Laura is dead and that there's someone else outside. Since the front door was open, the girls think that the killer could be inside already, but Zoe notices that the message on the window was written from outside, and says that they should stick together and find weapons to protect themselves. Maria agrees and adds that they also need to call the police when suddenly they hear the sound of glass shattering. They peek around the corner and see Pooh standing outside surrounded by a swarm of bees. Pooh peers through the window, and just then, all of the lights in the house go out. Alice and Zoe run to the kitchen to get a weapon, and Maria begins to have a mental breakdown, thinking that Pooh is her stalker returning to finish the job. The other two girls come back, and Zoe reassures Maria that whatever is out there, it's not her stalker. Alice remembers that Laura went out the back door to go to the pool, and she and Zoe take off again to make sure that that door is closed. Just then, Maria remembers that she has a gun upstairs, and she and Jessica run to go get it. They rummage through the dresser and finally find the massive revolver buried under some clothes. The girls go back to the stairs and see Pooh roaming around in the living room below before disappearing out of sight. Alice and Zoe sneak out to the pool and try to quietly close the back door. Just as they reach the door, they hear a noise from behind them and realize that the killer must be in the house. Suddenly, Piglet bursts out from the shadows, wielding a sledgehammer and knocks Alice to the ground. Zoe screams and falls into the pool, and Piglet turns his attention towards her girlfriend. But just as he's about to crush her with the hammer, he stops and goes back after Zoe. Piglet takes a huge chain from his neck and starts to swing it at her while she flops around in the water, narrowly missing her each time. The creature gets frustrated and goes back for his hammer instead before slowly wading into the pool. He walks after Zoe as she swims away, swinging at her with powerful overhead strikes. Alice wakes up just in time to see Piglet bash Zoe's face off and pummel her body over and over again. When he's finished, he turns his attention back to Alice and she blacks out from fear. That makes four victims down with eight more to go. Okay, as if blood all over the driveway wasn't bad enough, now the poor host has to drain their pool too. As soon as the girls found Laura's dead body and the words get out written in blood, it was time for flight or fight. Since they don't know where the killer is or how many of them there could be, they need to stick together and come up with a good escape plan if they want to survive. Alice and Zoe are wise to go to the kitchen and get some weapons, but instead of worrying about making sure the doors around the house were locked, I would have armed up, got all the girls together, and made a break for the cars. Pooh ran Laura over with Tina's car, and it looks like he took the keys, but the girls should still have the keys to the car that they drove there in. All that they need to do is make it to their car without getting caught and they'd be home free. And when I say they, what I really mean is I. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if all of us or only one of us make it out alive, as long as I'm that one. The other girls don't need to know that I'm thinking this, but if Pooh and Piglet came after us while we were running for the car, I wouldn't be above using one or all of them as a meat shield to make my escape. If running wasn't an option, at least they're in an easily fortified position and their cell phones have service. I normally would be 
strongly against running upstairs, but in this case, it could be their best bet. They probably could hold the second floor until the police arrived. Instead, they decide to split up into pairs and give Pooh and Piglet an easy opportunity to start picking them off one by one. When the other two girls leave to check the back door, Maria informs Jessica that she's had a gun upstairs the whole time. I was expecting something more along the lines of a Glock or similar semi-automatic pistol, not the howitzer that she pulls out. That thing would make Clint Eastwood blush, and it looks like it would knock these freaks right off their feet if Maria is able to land a shot. She has a perfect opportunity to start blasting when she sees Pooh downstairs in the living room, but inexplicably doesn't fire and just lets him go on with his rampage. What's the point of having a gun if you aren't going to use it if there's a homicidal bear person running around the house? I would have let that thing rip and sent him flying right out the back window, but I guess Maria needs more proof that her life is in danger before taking the shot. You know, more proof than her friend's head being popped like a melon in the driveway. Out by the pool, Alice and Zoe run into Piglet and the chaos begins. He knocks Alice to the ground and Zoe falls into the water, so right away we're off to a pretty rough start. Again, I have to ask, what's the point of arming themselves with weapons if they aren't going to use them? But when the danger shows up, she just flops around in the pool as Piglet prepares to kill her girlfriend. The first thing she should have done was obviously just to get out of the water so that she could either fight back or run. When Piglet realizes that Alice isn't going anywhere, he decides to save her for later and turns his attention to Zoe. As he slowly waded into the pool, she could have just swam to the other side and climbed out. Then, if there was anything plugged into electricity nearby, she she could knock it into the pool and hopefully electrocute Piglet to death. We already know what to expect from these girls when it comes to quick thinking and survival skills though. And Zoe just slowly backs away until she runs out of pool and Piglet takes her as his next victim. There is only three of them left and they're dropping by the second, but hopefully the remaining girls can salvage the situation before they all end up dead. Meanwhile, Maria and Jessica are still perched at the top of the steps when they see Pooh come stomping by again. Once he's gone, they run downstairs to investigate the screams and find Zoe's bloody body in the pool, with Pooh carrying Alice over his shoulder outside. The two girls quietly follow the creatures until they find them standing in the road. Maria asks if she should take the shot, but Jessica points out that Alice is too close, and they decide to wait for another opportunity. Just then, Piglet walks towards their hiding spot and starts to sniff around, looking for a moment like he might discover them, but he turns and walks away with Pooh, and the girls start following them again. Back at the hideout, Alice wakes up tied to some sort of ominous contraption, while Pooh stuffs his face with blood and honey from a huge jar nearby. He turns and looks at Alice before slowly walking over to her. Pooh stands over her and drools on her face, reaching up with his hand and brutally smacking her over and over again until she blacks out. Maria and Jessica finally get there and start to untie their friend. Alice is still traumatized from Zoe's death, but Maria says they need to hurry up and go because the monsters could be back at any time. Just as they're about to leave, they hear another woman scream, and Maria says if there's someone else out there, then they need to go save her. The three of them head inside the building where they see Christopher still tied to the rafters. Maria approaches him to see if he's okay when suddenly he wakes up, and the rest of the girls rush over to help untie him. Just as they get him down, they hear the woman scream from somewhere in the darkness again, and Christopher tells them to go save her, and he'll take care of himself. The three girls come to a strange ritual site in the forest and find Charlene, the woman who Maria bumped into at the gas station. She begs them to please help her and Jessica asks her what happened. Charlene explains that the two disfigured creatures who call themselves Pooh and Piglet took her hostage and that since they captured her, Piglet has been mauling her face over and over again. The girls untie her and the four of them run off into the darkness. They come back to Pooh's house and Charlene is horrified when she notices the reflection of her disfigured face. She she collapses to the ground screaming and the girls try their best to calm her down, but suddenly she snatches Maria's gun away and says that she's not leaving here until the creatures are dead. Charlene stumbles away, calling out for Piglet while the girls watch from a nearby hiding spot. She fires a single shot into the air to get his attention, and sure enough, Piglet comes waddling out from the darkness holding the chain over his head and letting out an animalistic roar. Charlene turns to face him, and the two of them circle around the fireplace, waiting to see who will make the first move. She raises the revolver and pulls the trigger, but nothing happens. And as she backs away in fear, she bumps right into Pooh. He grabs her by the neck and forces her to the ground while Piglet squeals with sick satisfaction. Pooh opens a jar of honey and pours it all over Charlene's face, and Piglet kneels over her and begins eating her alive. 
That makes five victims down with seven more to go. Suddenly, Pooh turns to face the girls and Maria and Jessica run away with him chasing after them, leaving Alice behind. Okay, now they're split up and they've lost their best weapon. When the girls find Pooh and Piglet outside, Maria asks if she should shoot, but Jessica tells her not to because she could hit Alice. I get that they don't want to accidentally hurt their friend, but I've seen this play out tons of times. And I want to go on record saying that if I'm ever in this situation, take the shot. I'd rather take my chances with a bullet than stick around to see what sort of torture Pooh and Piglet had planned. If it works and they take Pooh out, then they've saved Alice, and if they accidentally hit Hit her, at least she'll have a relatively quick and painless death compared to whatever Pooh is going to do. The girls manage to untie Alice and are home free to make their escape, but decide to stop and save the other woman who the creatures have trapped. Terrible idea. They should have just kept going and never looked back. That way, at least the three of them could survive and might even be able to send professionals to go get the lady instead of the four of them most likely ending up dead at the hands of Pooh and Piglet. They go looking for the woman and find her tied up to some trees. Again, they get her down and almost get away without being noticed. But this time, the woman that they went out of their way to save decides to freak out and blow their cover. What's worse is that Maria allows her to snatch the gun right out of her hands. Obviously, I would have never let that crazy lady get her hands on my revolver. The woman immediately wastes a bullet to lure Piglet out. Now she's down to only four or five shots left depending on the gun. And in this situation, you're going to need every bullet that you have available. They have their showdown around the fire pit, but when she raises the gun to shoot Piglet, it doesn't go off. I'm not sure why this could possibly be since that's a double action revolver and it should fire as soon as you pull the trigger. Unless of course Maria only put one bullet in the gun. It was clearly a bad idea to let this crazy lady get her hands on the most powerful weapon, and the chances of any of them surviving the night are looking worse and worse by the second. The girls run through the forest and make it to one of the dark tree tunnels, grabbing a torch off of the wall and using it to fend off Pooh, but he swats it away and chases them deeper into the woods. Meanwhile, Alice picks up the sledgehammer and bashes Piglet with it, knocking him unconscious. He wakes up and realizes that Alice has him chained to the trees, and she starts beating him, telling him that she's going to make him pay for for what he did. Alice picks up the sledgehammer and starts smashing him with it, bashing him over the top of the head and killing him. In the distance, Pooh hears Piglet scream and takes off towards the noise, leaving Maria and Jessica for later. Alice stands over Piglet's dead body, but hears Pooh sprinting towards her and turns around just as he grabs her by the throat, lifting her up into the air and stabbing her through the mouth with a machete. That makes six victims down with six more to go. Maria and Jessica scream when they see what happened to their friend and Pooh spins around to chase them again, ready to finish the job. The girls run for their lives, with Pooh chasing behind them wildly swinging the sledgehammer with one arm. Finally, they make it to the nearby road and see headlights from a car coming towards them. They run towards the car begging for help, and a group of local men get out to see what's going on. The girls try to explain that they all need to get out of there right away. And just then, one of the men notices Pooh standing in the middle of the road. The girls get in the car, and the men ask them if this is the creature that's been chasing them. The girls try to tell them to run, but the four men grab weapons out of the truck and get ready to teach Pooh a lesson. They ask him what he's been doing to the girls, but Pooh only stands there silently while they approach. The men surround him, and the first guy smashes Pooh across the face with a crowbar, but he takes the hit and stares directly at him. The other three men join in and unleash a beating on Pooh that would definitely kill a normal person, striking him over and over again with their various weapons, but Pooh stands there unfazed. He clenches his fist and smacks one of the men so hard that he rips half of his face off. Pooh grabs the next guy, karate chops his arm off, and then curb stomps his head, popping it like a water balloon. He slices the third man's throat with his claws and sends a swarm of bees out to kill the last guy when he runs away. That makes 10 victims down with two more to go. The girls start the truck and run Pooh over, but as they speed away, they realize that he's climbing into the back. Pooh crawls across the roof, making his way towards the front seat, but at the last moment, Maria slams on the brakes, sending Pooh flying and knocking both girls unconscious. Maria wakes up and sees Pooh dragging Jessica out of the car by her hair. He takes her into the road in front of the truck and cuts her head off. That makes 11 victims down with one more to go. Maria panics and tries to start the car, but it won't turn over. Pooh walks up and drags her out of the truck, and just when he's about to stab her, Christopher comes flying up in another vehicle and hits him, pinning Pooh between the two cars. 
Okay, is it bad that after watching Pooh throw down against those four townies that I'm starting to get on his side? Alice got some sweet revenge on Piglet, and it was good to see one of those girls finally do something to turn the tables in their favor. She should have known that Pooh was going to come running when he heard Piglet squeal though, and prepared herself for his inevitable counterattack. And he adds the group's most effective warrior to the death count. When I saw those four locals getting out of the truck, I thought for sure they'd be able to at least damage Pooh in the fight, even if a few of them went down. Boy, was I wrong. I guess Pooh is also super strong and impervious to damage, which these fellas found out the hard way. I'm not sure what's in that honey he's been eating, but whatever's going on, it's clear that you do not want to try to take him on in a fair fight. Although he can't be hurt, it should still be possible to cripple Pooh's leg enough to slow him down dramatically and give them all a chance to escape. Unfortunately, the four guys go into the fight too sure that they'll be able to take Pooh down with brute force and end up getting killed before they even have a chance to try another strategy. Maria and Jessica take their chance to escape and try to speed off after running Pooh over with the truck, but he pulls a Terminator and starts climbing across the roof about to smash right through the windshield. The obvious thing to do here would have been to speed up and then slam on the brakes while he was still in the bed of the truck and sending him tumbling out of the back. Maria waits until the last possible second, and then executes the plan so poorly that she knocks herself and Jessica unconscious. Unless she wants to end up like Jessica, this is no time for Maria to lose her head. But sure enough, she panics, and Pooh drags her out of the car, about to finish the job. Luckily for Maria, Christopher comes along at that exact moment and does the first heroic thing we've seen him do in days. I know the beast was starving for a bite to eat, but it looks like Christopher just turned him into a poo sandwich. But something tells me that Pooh isn't done just yet, and we'll see if Maria and Christopher manage to act quickly enough to escape with their lives. Christopher catches his breath and climbs out, walking over to see if Maria is okay. He starts to help her up, but suddenly Pooh comes back to life and frees himself, staggering after them with a knife. The car explodes, knocking the two of them to the ground, and Pooh grabs Maria and drags her away. Christopher pleads for him to spare her life, saying that he'll stay if Pooh lets her go. But Pooh finally speaks, simply saying, you left before slitting Maria's throat. She falls into Christopher's arms, choking on her own blood, and tells him to go while he still has a chance. Christopher stands up and runs off into the darkness. That makes all 12 victims down, and it looks like Pooh's rampage is just getting started. If you found yourself trapped in a deadly fairy tale, complete with childhood heroes gone berserk, would you fight or run for your lives? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe, and check out the How to Beat playlist for more videos just like this. And don't forget from now on that we'll be uploading on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Until next time, have a damn good day.